All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading anyway. So let's get into it today. So markets here today with a, basically, I would just call it a dead cat bounce. Um, and uh, I'll make a call for you guys. I think we're going to see a panic tomorrow on jobs. Uh, just the way that the market's behaving. You're not seeing a V-shape here. And I see the way yields are selling off. We had obviously jolts this morning. You can see here, um, good dip by, you know, originally, I think market just a little oversold from yesterday. Had to work that condition off. And you can see here the way yields are behaving. Uh, big slice, no rebound. I mean, it rebounded for a little bit and then we rolled over. You can see the dollar index during RTH also you know, basically at the lows of the day. Granted, we went right into the 20 MA. There is room for a higher low here. Um, when I say panic, though, um, I think that's probably a, a fading opportunity. Um, specifically, I think bonds, the long bond is really crowded. And I think that most of this is priced in. That doesn't mean we won't see a big panic. You're going to see X freaking out about the yield curve, which is now uninverted. So, um, Hence the uh, thumbnail, alert the media, um, get everybody ready, because the yield curve is uninverting, um, except the three-month ten-year. So don't don't show anybody this chart because it doesn't fit narratives, um, even though it's inverted by 131 basis points um, and is no sign of recovering. Um, but you know that's not a good narrative, and that doesn't sell uh, you know news stories. So let's forget about that. But I do think we'll see a panic. And I told you guys yesterday, I think VIX 24, 25 uh, is about it on this leg. I'm going to say even lower than that, probably. And um, my guess is, though, this will spike tomorrow morning. And I think it reverses um, by the end of the day. And I think that non-farm payroll, which is a very doctored number, will probably come in magically favorable. And I think the market will put in a pivot there. So that's kind of my base case right now. And um, we'll see if I'm right. Um, market holding on to 5,500 right now. There's a little bit of GEX ODTE at, um, I think it's 5,490 still. Yeah. So we could see a little bit of a flush here with only 15 minutes left in the day. So we could see a little bit of a flush here. I think, you know, we, we might actually, oh, did they, they move that? Okay. It moved up. 5,530 now. Oh, so we might get a little recovery here. It doesn't matter. Not a big deal. Um, we're holding on to 550 SPY, right? You can see that there, or perhaps not. It doesn't matter. We're in that area. But um, that's kind of base case right now. And uh, I think they try to spike up vol. I think it's a, I think it's a good uh, opportunity. I just think too many people trying to short right now. And uh, I think bonds are too crowded. But either way, um, we'll see if I'm right about that. And, um, Couple other things going on. I mean, like, I don't know what else to talk about. That's really the base case here. Um, Tesla, look at that. How about Tesla today? That has been relatively strong even yesterday. And this might be the, um, it's gonna be funny too, if this ends up being the new, well, going back to being the darling um, because nobody likes chips right now. Nobody likes Nvidia. Um, stock twits is now officially bearish, which is funny. Um, by the way, Kramer, I, I heard this. I cannot substantiate it, unfortunately, but I guess this morning he was talking about a head and shoulder pattern. I've been waiting for a long time to talk about this um, because I know it's coming. People are going to be talking about this head and shoulder pattern on the socks and the semis. And once enough people start talking about it, um, that's when we'll be able to reverse. But you know, Kramer, that's a, that's a good one, um, especially going to small. So that does make me kind of bullish chips a little bit, um, potentially as a contrarian. By the way, we did uh, get a nice trade off um, TSM this morning in the trading room. Very nice dip buy off that buy signal we had this morning. And that's been holding up relatively well um, compared to the rest of the you know chip market and stock market for that matter. So TSM hanging in there. We'll see what NVIDIA does, but I, I think it's interesting, um, you know, if nvidia starts dropping the ball and chips continue to drop the ball rather um does tesla come back and and <laughs> go back to being the darling here it's been holding up nicely i also think amazon um despite being down today has not got a bad chart pattern another one netflix um you know mega cap holding up very well so just some uh thoughts there we'll see what we get tomorrow though and um 
Again, 5,500 is still a big point of control for SPX, you know, on a closing basis. We bounced off of the uh, 50 and 20 moving average, little uh, back test there. And uh, on the Qs, you know, same kind of thing, basically just flat on the day, hitting the 100 MA. And um, I think we hit the 382. We talked about that yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so and there's your 50% FIB. If we gap down, you know, look for that area um, on the SPX. You know, if we gap down, look for the 382 there. So 5450. You know, and then we can go to 5400. I would expect that to be, you know, major short term support if we were to really flush out. And I'm wrong about this, but I feel pretty good about the setup I have on the VIX tomorrow. So um, IWM down 34 cents. Nothing terrible here. You know, it actually V shaped pretty good in the morning. And it went right into. Um, I mean, right there. I mean, clear as day, right into that uh, resistance zone and backed off. So good level to level action there. But again, flat to lower on the day. The Dow is fractionally positive. Again, it's more of a defensive. That makes sense. SMH we talked about. Um, again, it may come into the uh, 200. We'll see if that happens. Probably a fib there. Yeah, they're already at the 618 there, so. And then you got, you know, the socks fractionally higher here. That's into the 200 now. Uh, cloud, again, strong. So again, um, it, chips are weak, but cloud's been strong, right? We're not that far off all-time highs. And um, again, it's basically holding this trend line here on a closing basis. It is down today, but not much. Has not participated in the sell-off um, in the afternoon. So again, I continue to like cloud. Um, if there's a tech, if there's an area in tech that I want to be long, it's this. And then, I mean, right now, you could make a case all this is is a back test of the weekly 20 MA. Again, we'd still have two days left in the week, but I'm just saying at face value here. Uh, Dow Transports, very strong. Green and down tapes actually rallying up right now in the last 10 minutes. Uh, 15.9. You have bullish inside bar, and technically, um, I have a proprietary buy signal on this on the daily chart right now. I, it's just how it is. So, um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's odd, but it, it's how it is. Um, that's just, it's right there. You guys know my cycle stuff and uh, methodology. You know what I'm talking about and looking at. Um, and is that oil helping out? Probably. But, you know, at the same time, it's a double-edged sword, right? It, it You could just say, like, well, the transports are only bidding up because of oil. Well, yeah, but if oil's crashing and we're going to a recession, why would the transports be bidding? Um, again, going back to the three-month tenure, which no one cares about. Um, suddenly, no one cares about. Maybe that's contradicting something. Maybe oil traders are offsides. Maybe oil's going to squeeze. I think there's support at 66. We'll see how it, how it plays out here. Um, I don't think it really bottoms out too much. Um, I think it, in the short term, I'm not saying it can't go lower, but um, I think this probably holds this area here. If it tries to test in the you know tomorrow or so, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, yields we talked about a little bit, but there's the yield curve. Um, tens. Well, let's, look, let's start with the twos. Okay, the twos, I'm much more bearish on. Um, that can be weaker. Fives, and then I think on the long end um, has the higher chance of rallying. The least amount of downside. So I'm watching this very closely. For any sort of false breakdown, any sort of squeeze sign. And then the dollar index here, again, it, yes, it's pulling back, but again, this is just a theory, right? What if it just does that, high or low, right? Nobody's really prepared for that. I think, I think, I think this weak job stuff is, is, in the short term, is priced in, personally. Yet I'm not like long yields or the dollar, but that's something I can definitely see happening and, and might get long. We'll see. Um, XHB down 23 cents, um, you know, failure on the, on the green bar. So not good, but it's holding the moving averages. You're holding support and the weekly is still, there's no problem here. So again, don't, you know, always defer to that weekly when you have conflicting timeframes. It doesn't mean it can't break down, but right now we give it the bias. VNQ just continues to be a monster, uh, up 32 cents here, new 52 week high. Bull in sidebar above all the moving averages, trend is up. It's going to 97. And um, if it wants, I mean, pff, nothing to say it try, doesn't try to go for 100. Let's just take a fib here to see where we're at. Yeah, 618's up at 
I would just say give it the upside bias to 100. So this continues to just be a powerhouse, doesn't care about the market selling off. XLF still strong. And despite semiconductor weakness, which is usually a big red flag for the market, and it is, um, XLF holding up. So Finn's holding up. KRE down 79 cents, but still have a bull inside bar on the daily. So again, there, you know, with Finn's hanging in there, it's not a bad sign. KBE hanging in there. Broker dealers down a little bit today. Again, so what? It's at all-time highs, basically. Oil, we talked about. Um, I'll just give it the downside bias to 66. I think if you see a panic flush, though, it could provide a quick trading opportunity. I think a lot of people are probably short. XLE down one and a half. Just give it the downside bias to double bottom. XOP, I don't think that has much downside here and for tomorrow. I think that probably tries to, to hold tomorrow. But after that, it could probably try double bottom. And the same thing with OIH, it could probably try to pierce. We'll probably get a panic tomorrow morning in, in, in like this in energy. If, if yields uh, go down, they'll they'll probably pile in short crude. They'll pile in short or they'll pile in long bonds. And I think that's where this possible setup I'm talking about could play out. CCJ, nice bounce though. It is off the highs. Um, for me, it's all about pattern right now. It's trying for a higher low here. Got to get above the, um, that red bar high, 4018. And maybe you can put in a pattern. What I don't like is that NM is not um, bouncing as well. I mean, it's bouncing, but not as good. And NJ sold off heavy on volume yesterday. So Junior's weak. Um, that gas down six cents today. It went right to our level. Look at that, 228, 230 area. I mean, almost perfectly. And a good pullback there. So now it's on pattern with this too. If this can firm up, and you can complete that kind of W pattern. But right now, nothing to do with that. Dollar we talked about as room for higher low. JPY, uh, yen down, but watch the double bottom there. It could be a thing. Gold still uh, holding up very well. No surprise, up 60 cents. It's off all time highs. Silver getting a small bounce today. Not doing anything with that yet. Um, platinum and palladium just fractionally lower here today, so nothing doing there. Copper also bouncing, but uh, basically flat. Nothing to do there either. Bitcoin um, up 75 basis points. This may have been a liquidity grab here. So somebody got roasted last night, obviously. Look at this hourly candle. Boom. Actually, let's go to a 10 minute. Yeah. Boom, boom, right back. So somebody got liquidated. Obviously, we got above that breakdown bar too. So what you got here is a possible failed breakdown. Bear flag, dip, no follow through. So if we can uh, close above that candle from yesterday, we'll just say 60,000, call it even. Um, this could squeeze up. So Bitcoin not participating in the sell with equities today and actually a pretty good looking, you know, I always like that. It's got that liquidity grab look to it. ETH up 1% too. But chart's a little bit weaker. So crypto is interesting here, maybe telling us something. All right, 3.55 p.m. Yeah, we're just hanging around 5.51, 5.50 SPY. See what we get tomorrow. We'll see if bonds are crowded like I think they are. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I'll wrap it up here. Again, you guys take care. Don't find me on I'll see you guys all tomorrow.